Assalamu alaikum. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. How does one person who's suffering from having um, false or negative images entering their mind when trying to think of Allah or worshipping, how does one battle that? So when one has bad thoughts or bad images when one is thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does one battle it? The, one of the great Hanafi jurists, Imam al-Sarakhsi, he said, As-sabilu fi al-waswasati qat'uha wa'adamu l-iltifati ilayha. The basis of responding to waswasa, to doubts, to misgivings, is to cut off their source and to pay no attention to them. Right? You don't, you know, you don't busy yourself with it. Right? You don't busy yourself with it. So you know something is wrong, just ignore it. Right? Just ignore it. You don't have to prove that it's wrong. Right? You don't have to prove that it's wrong. It has to prove to you that it is right. So you ignore it. That's number one. If the doubts relate to faith, yeah, or, you know, or sometimes you know, you're, you're, you're trying to pray and some people, you know, they have some delusionary image or whatever. Say, A'udhu Billah. Right? So you seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it. Don't pay any attention to it. If you think, the more you think about it, the bigger it gets. My friend, a friend of mine used the example. Said, he said, doubts are like a frog. I said, how? It's like a very uncle type statement. Said, if, if you have a, a frog... And you st- bring, the closer you bring it to yourself, the bigger it seems. Looks like you bring, said, bring it really, I've never done this by the way. Bring it really close, it looks big and scary. Big bulging eyes, whatever. And you put it on the ground, walk away, look at it from a distance, it's nothing. Right? So, that, so that's kind of like these doubts, the more you think about it, the bigger it gets. And then they tend to multiply. So you have to discipline yourself by avoiding it. Seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim And busy, busy yourself with the good. Right? Busy yourself with, with the remembrance, with good. Sometimes, some kind of doubts, just be with other people. Doubts that, if you have a, but if it's a point of knowledge that causes you doubt, sometimes just something absurd. Just don't think about it. If it's a point of knowledge, Imam Abu Hanifa said, immediately one should say, I believe what is true with Allah. Stop thinking about the specific doubt and go and seek Sound means of redressing the doubt. Right? So, because if you've got, a, you've got a wound, you don't stay, stand there staring at the wound. Oh my God, I have a wound, I have a wound. Right? It's not going to get better. You, you know that there's a wound, so you go and get it, you deal with it. If you can deal with it yourself, or it just needs a little bandage, so go deal with it. And if you can't deal with it, because it's a big you know, gaping cut or something, similarly we have a something that's wounding our faith, then consult. The Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ كُنْتُمْ لَا تعلم. Ask the people of remembrance if you know not. The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ الْعِيْءَ سؤال. The only cure for confusion is to ask. Okay? And one should ask. And, but one should not suppress a doubt. If a doubt relates to faith, for example, one should not suppress it. Because that repressed doubt will, will spread, perhaps unknowingly. And could make things much worse. The rather, one, one says to oneself, Aman tu billah, I believe in Allah. Right? Say the shahada. Right? Um, but then go and deal with the doubt. Right? Deal with the doubt through effective means. Often people do absurd things. They get a doubt to say, let me research this topic. But they go research it in ab- absurd ways. Right? If you cut yourself, you wouldn't say, okay. Amr, could you maybe help me with this wound? Amr said, let me see what I can do. Amr is a good guy, but do you know anything about treating big wounds? No. Right? So you make things even worse. Right? So, so that's, the, um, that's the basis. Um, and we have a lot of answers on the Seekers Hub. We actually have a reader on, on how to deal with misgivings and doubts. Because uh, when it relates to actions, the basis of waswasa... Imam, Zar, Imam Ahmad Zarruq says um, that 
الجهل بالسنة أو قلة العقل <laughs> the, the cause of waswasa is not knowing the sunnah or just stupidity, um, lack of intelligence. But he, but he doesn't mean lack of intelligence you know, as an insult, but that you don't have the principles right, um, to, to deal with the waswasa. Because the intelligent person, al-aqil, man, man raja'at tasarrufatuhu ila aslin thabit. An intelligent person is one whose conduct returns to principle, whether the principles established by revelation or those established by reason. That's an intelligent person, someone whose conduct and choices return to established principles. And the foolish person is the one who just does whatever they feel like. Where, so. The cause of waswasa is two things. One is lack of understanding of how to deal with waswasa, which is you ignore it. And number two, lack of knowledge of sunnah, al jahlu bi sunnah. Because you know, they say aslu deen, the basis of religion, is talabul ihtiyat. Is that the person wants to do what is more cautionary. But if you don't know what is the standard of praiseworthy action, of cautious conduct, then it's very easy to go to excess. So, if you want to do things right, there's the, this impulse to be careful. If unchecked, that'll lead to excessiveness. So, what are the two things? One needs to know the, the, the sunnah. How do you do it according to the sunnah? Take that as your limit. Iltazim is sunnah, wala tazid. Hold to the sunnah, don't go beyond. And the Prophet said that about wudu. بعد أن أتى بتثريث الغسل في الوضوء قال هذا وضوئي ووضوء الأنبياء من قبلي فمن زاد عن ذلك أو نقص فقد تعدى أو ظلم The Prophet ﷺ when he made wudu he washed first once then twice the third when he washed everything three times and then he said this is my wudu and the wudu of the prophets before me whoever goes beyond this or falls short of this has been excessive or negligent Excessive by washing more than three times. Negligent by doing less without excuse. So one st sticks to the sunnah and one learns the principles related to doing it right. That's the aql, to act on the basis of reason. So in anything, you want to be cautious, there's two things. Learn the sunnah soundly and do that and don't go beyond. And learn the principles related to that thing so that you can make principled choices in the matter. That's the aql. That you're, you're aql fit tasarruf. So if one holds to those two principles, one will be safe. If one goes outside of those principles, one will be confused and could harm oneself and others. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org donate and make a small monthly commitment today.